Hello friends. Today, using my toaster repair as an example, I'm going to talk about the weakest point of budget toasters and how to make the right choice when buying one. Here it is, my long-suffering toaster from 2013. When I bought it, I did not know yet about the design features of inexpensive toasters and was guided by the type of galvanic coating of internal parts of the toaster and the shape of the section of the nichrome wire. The fact is that in the past, some toasters also used less efficient heating elements based on round nichrome wire. So, the history of my toaster's repairs is as follows. The first time it failed about three years after purchase due to a broken contact between the nichrome tape and the rivet that powers the timer. And here we come to the most important difference between the more reliable toasters and the less reliable ones. In the right toasters, the timer is powered directly from the mains. And in the wrong toasters, the power to the timer is supplied from the voltage divider, in the role of which are the heating elements themselves. The weak point of this connection is the contact between the rivet and the nichrome tape. The point is that the potential difference between these voltage divider pins is only 10 to 20 volts. And this voltage is not enough to penetrate the oxide layer that eventually forms between the nichrome wire and the rivet. And it is through the body of this rivet that the power to the timer board is supplied. So during the first repair, I drilled out that rivet and then replaced the brass screws that acted as it several times. During the last repair, the nichrome wire broke in the exact spot where it was damaged during riveting. And so with this improvised solution, the toaster ran for another six months. But on another failure, I took the repair more seriously. First, I finally figured out a more reliable way to connect the nichrome wire. Specifically, I made two couplings from a medical drip needle. And then I put the nichrome tape together with a piece of nichrome wire. Since I didn't have a special tool, I used once damaged wire cutters. And secondly, I decided to completely redesign the power system so that I could power the timer directly from the mains. To do this, I first measured the current consumption of the timer. And then I calculated the so-called quench capacitor using this formula. I connected the capacitor through a diode bridge to a voltage regulator on a Zener diode, which was already on the circuit board, and then I made sure the timer was working properly. I then made holes in the circuit board and pressed hollow rivets into them, so that I could securely fasten additional circuit elements. I connected these elements using PTFE insulated wire, as the temperature inside the toaster is quite high. If you're having trouble finding and buying electronic components, then visit this online store. Here you can find everything you need and even get free shipping. The largest range of radio components is always at your fingertips. The link to the site is in the description of the video. I also had to run an extra fiberglass insulated power wire. This wire I pulled from an electric stove that my neighbors decided to dispose of. Hopefully, after this repair, the toaster will last a few more years before the nichrome band degrades completely. And so, in order to choose a more reliable toaster that does not contain a programmed fault, it is enough to look inside the toaster right in the store and make sure that there is no such additional contact rivet located asymmetrically. Each heater should have only two rivet contacts or two lamella type contacts located at the edges of the heater. If you see a third rivet or lamella on one of the heating elements, then this toaster will fail in a few years. Have a great shopping experience. See you on the channel.